Hello, today we are going to be doing another tutorial about the mirthlearningcenter.org's um, online applications that they have. And so to, app, to access these applications, I'm just going to type in math learning center apps in my search bar. And it's going to come up with this screen right here. And then I can click on this free math apps and it's going to bring me right here. Now these are web-based applications because I'm on a computer, but any of these can be downloaded for free onto an iPad or a phone. Um, if you have a, a lot of times if you have a school-based um, iPad, they might already be on there for you. But today we're gonna be looking at the Number Pieces app. So a couple of things I just like to go over all the time. If you click on the name Number Pieces, it's not gonna bring you to the app, it's gonna bring you to an informational page which might be really helpful for you. So I'm gonna go back and show you that you're just gonna to go to this open web app. If you go to these, you can go to the stores to buy the apps for your mobile devices. But here we're gonna open the web app. Now number pieces are in the educational world sometimes called base 10 blocks. And what they are are their visual ways for students to be able to see how much is actually in a number. And this is really important for understanding place value. So let's say, as an example, I'm gonna go down here to this bar where I can type up numbers. I am gonna type up the number 78. Okay, so that's gonna be my focus right now, 78. If I want to model the number 78, I can bring out these rods, which represent tens. So I'm going to need to have seven of them. And as I take them out, um, you can see that it's taking me a little bit of time to, to do this, and that's okay. Um, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, there are my seven tens that I have there. So then I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And since I have 78, now I'm going to need to add some ones here. All right, there are my eight ones. Okay, so I've got my 78. All right, now if I were to add two more to this, so I'm gonna just click over here and add plus two. I'm gonna add that right here. If I were to add two more to this, now if I look at my ones, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So then all of a sudden, I no longer have seven tens and eight ones. I have seven tens and 10 ones. And so with students, we wanna understand that whenever we get a new group of 10, that, that shifts into the next place value. So the way that we can show it with this is if we hold the cursor down and do a lasso around these blocks right here, so they all are highlighted, and I go down to this little button right here, you'll see this is the join pieces button. I click that and it shows that, ah, oh, that becomes a 10. If there weren't 10 there and a student did the lasso on it, then it wouldn't form a group of 10. So this is a really awesome way for students to see that. Now it's not going the same direction as the other bar. So if I click on this button down here, the rotate, I can get it to go the same direction. And add it right there. Now let's say that a student is looking at this and they're like, wait a minute, how do, I don't really understand this. I don't understand that now that I have my 7, the 8 plus 2, that I have this new number 80, which is really 8 tens. Like that just doesn't make sense to them. Oh, I got to put my equal sign in here. Okay, done. Move that over. So I have my equal sign. All right, so they're not believing. In order to see, sometimes kids really need to be able to count things in order to believe that they don't, just don't take adults for face value. They don't believe it. So now I can go down here to this button where it's separate and I click on that. And now each of these is its own separate piece. So students can start pulling these apart and it might be painful for an adult to watch, but some students might need to pull them all apart and count that there's 80 there to really understand that eight tens is the same as 80 ones. Again, if we wanna go back to putting them back together, 
I can do a lasso around these like this, and then I can click this join, and now I'm back to having groups of 10. So I've got 10, 10, I mean, eight tens now here. So students can see that, okay, I've lassoed them up. Now, let's say for example, all right, I'm gonna restart. So this button down here is a restart. Um, let's say that a student pulls out 12 ones. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, and again, we want them to understand this place value component of it, that 12 is actually 10, one 10 and two ones. I can lasso it, and then if I click join, look, they can see that I have one 10 and two ones left there. So these are really important concepts for students to grasp. And so this app is a really good way for students to play around with that. Um, I haven't introduced hundreds yet, but this is a hundreds bar over here. And again, we can click separate and it shows us that's 10 ones. I can click separate again. And then that shows us that's in 10 tens. And then this shows us that's 100 ones. So students can really play around with that. You can give them a number and have them make it in many different ways. You can have them make it all in ones. You can have them make it in tens and ones. You can try to make it in hundreds, tens and ones. So, so many different ways that we can play around with this application. Now, all of these blocks are in yellow right now. If you choose, if you wanted students to really see the difference, and then we can start playing around that we can use this way, we can have the pieces be different colors. So I'm going to restart this. And so I'm just going to pull out the red here. Now, if I want to, again, click this and separate it into tens, I click this, it's red, and now you'll notice it instantly goes to green because those are 10 rods now. So that might be a good way for those students that really need another way to see it and color helps them understand the visual connection to numbers, that that might be a good tool for them to use. Other tools that exist in our toolbar is that we can change, we wanna duplicate something, we can click on this and then we've got another set. So that's our duplication button. Again, this is our rotate button. So if we wanted to rotate something horizontally and then vertically, we can press on that. This magnification button makes it so that we can make it smaller. If we're working with really large numbers that have many hundreds, then you might wanna use this because you're not gonna want those huge pieces in there. You saw me use this before. This little piece right here, you can write equations and um, do greater than, less than, play around with it. Um, you can use a little algebra. It's got a question mark. You can write an equation with an algebra, with an algebra component because you have something missing. So that's something that you can use there. Um, if you want to do some writing, let's say I am learning about tens and ones, then this little bar can help you out and you can move that wherever you want to. So students can learn about what they've done. Maybe they can show that they've made a number with just tens. Maybe they've showed it with just ones. Maybe they've showed it with hundreds, tens, and ones, but they can write about what they've been learning. This right here, this little bar is our writing tool. So if we wanted to write an equation, let's say if we wanted to write um, 100 plus 100 equals 200, Students can actually write that with their mouse if they want to, but this can also be used in applications like let's say you want them to be drawing the separation uh, between tens and ones. If I move one of these down here, I'm gonna go back to my drawing tool now. If you want them to be drawing the separation, whoops, click on that. Then they can actually be you know showing those separations there so there are different reasons why students might want to write on the screen and so that's available for you to use you can change the color of the writing uh, this is an eraser where you can erase different pieces of it and this will erase everything so clear all the drawing all right so that is a really basic introduction a lot of people are using screen castomatic these days and they want to share what they've made so what's nice about this is that you can create a cop a sharing link so I could copy this link and it's gonna be able to paste this 
onto Seesaw or maybe an email or something and be able to send it to a teacher or another colleague. Um, you can also save it, this image, as a file to your computer. So that's another nice component of these applications is that you have this share button down here. And this little informational bar will help you if you get stuck with anything. Um, this helps you understand what the tools are about. But what's really cool about all of these is that if you have a student that's using one of these applications, you really want to let them play around with it first. And nine times out of 10, a student's going to learn more and they're playing around with it than anything that if you had sat down with them and, and tried to teach them because students are really intuitive about technology. So, all right, so that is the tutorial for today. And I hope this helps some of you use this application with students or parents. I hope this helps you at home with your, with your kiddos as they embark on this online learning.